obviously you won the Heisman, but you go to New York for the Heisman ceremony and uh, you're up against Manti Teo um, and did. And you know what transpired with all that situation uh, um, being catfished. Did you guys did you guys talk to anything about that? So how how was he during that time? Amazing. And his parents and family, the way they were with my family, you know, you'll see my dad and my mom in the videos of that Heisman ceremony with lays around their neck. Mm -hmm. So it was a very, um, you know, we, we were close throughout that week, right? right? I thought he, his family was amazing. I thought Manti was amazing, you know. I didn't know anything about whatever anything else was until right. later right. Um, from the dock. And, you know, during those times, we even played against each other when I was in Cleveland and he was in San Diego, mm -hmm. I think. So... We always had a good relationship. You know, I always respected him for, you know, what he stood for and who he was as a person and, and who his family was. Right. I'm going back and I'm looking at guys that have won the Heisman from the SEC. You look at Joe Burrow, Cam Newton, Tim Tebow, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield. You were the first freshman to ever win it, and you accumulated an SEC record then, 4,600 yards of total offense. Where would you put yourself if, if we're having a, if we're having a, a, a college – and I'm not going to the NFL because obviously the guys with the prototypical size. But where would you think Johnny Manziel see Heisman Trophy season would rank among those guys? Behind Burroughs. Behind Burrow, but in front of Cam? No. What about? Uh, I would say for me, in my opinion, Joe Burroughs is probably the best Heisman season to ever happen. And that's just like, look at the numbers. Like, yeah. It's not even a comparison. For and me, it's him or Barry, the, and the swagger and what he did it with, and I, I think it's I think it's a no brainer. I think right. yeah, agree. Him and Barry somewhere up there at the top, <laughs> stand alone yeah. type of thing. Cam for me is of cultural importance, and you know coming in from Blinn Junior College and going to Auburn, I remember that, and then they played the team Oregon that I was committed to at the time. Right. So it leaves an impact and a memory on me, and I love Cam Newton. Right. To the max, love what he stands for. Love what he what he's about. Love him to death, and always have. He knows that, and so I think you go Joe Burrow. I think you go Cam, and then I'm right below that. And I respect Bakers and and Kylers, and you can nitpick all this all you want because at the end of the day, it's all about getting to that stage in New York and getting right. that trophy. Right now, you're splitting hairs on who's greater than who, and all collectively as a whole, we're fucking badass. Right. The first freshman in NCAA history to pass for 3,000 yards and carry and rush for 1,000 yards in the same season. The first player to pass for 300 yards and rush for 100 yards in the same game three times. Broke Archie Manning's 43-0 record for 500 in total yards of, seven, of a total offense with 576. Owns all these freshmen's record. 11-2, and two, ranked number five, best since 1956. Beat Oklahoma 41-13 in the Cotton Bowl. Produced 516 yards of offense, four touchdowns, with a record 229 yards rushing. When you look, when you, do you understand at the time what you're actually doing? Um, when the ESPN Heisman list came out about week eight, nine, is when I started to kind of see like, whoa, because this is, you know, my life growing up with my boys was NCAA football, the video game, the road to glory, the road to the Heisman creating a player and being able to go do these things, pick your school, go to the, you know, do all of that. And now I'm living it. Right. So the focus doesn't shift to like getting the Heisman. It just focuses on like taking this team to heights that we haven't been before. Mm -hmm. And when you walk into Tuscaloosa, Alabama and do what happened that day, something that leaves a legacy, what, 2012, it's 2012 years later, mm -hmm. where I walk down the street every day of my life and somebody comes up and dabs me up and goes, 15 and a half point underdogs, Alabama, I'll never forget that day for the rest of my life. That's what kind of impact that day had on college football. What if I told you that after Cliff Kingsbury left and I won the Heisman that I thought about maybe going somewhere else too? How, would, how much it was going to take for them to break you off for you to even, for you to even consider it? I don't know at that point in time. You know, I was thinking about like, you know, I loved A&M and I, but this way that like. Could you feel the shift? Could I feel the shift? I don't know. I could see that I was getting used a little bit into what they needed me to do to have their master plan, right? A&M had their vision of what they needed with this hype and this success to get the program as a whole where they needed to be. 
unfortunately, where they needed to go and where I needed to go and grow as a human being and as a football player weren't always step in step. They weren't always aligned. Right. Do I have hard feelings about it or do I feel any kind of way about it right now? Absolutely not. I love my school. I love what happened. I love walking back into that stadium and feeling like I had a piece of putting one of these bricks in the walls outside. And I can carry myself and say you that. I don't, think, I don't think it's the house that Johnny built. That's what they call it. They can call it what they want. You got to like it, that. Like? Yeah. That's disrespectful to Mike Evans. That's disrespectful to Jake Matthews. Well, Mike Evans, they, they, they didn't call Mike Evans or Mike football. They call you Johnny football. They didn't call uh, Jake Matthew the Luke Jokel. Okay, so I get, the praise, I get the praise for what we do as a team because my play is special on you, the field. If you would have set out your entire season as a freshman, do you think you would have learned your lesson? Ooh, um, no. I think it took me having the biggest fear of my entire life, failure, come to fruition. And failure wouldn't have happened for me if I didn't get to the success that I got. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you think they would have disciplined you? Um, I think they could have. I think what I was doing in the off season and what I was doing in my workouts and who I was as a team leader, right. coming back with the Heisman Trophy, they should have benched me. They should have suspended me. But what I was doing, hey, you can't smoke weed. <laughs> Man, give me the fattest, dude. Give me the fattest one you got, Talk bro. about it. It's about a box of white out white grapes. We ain't even <laughs> slowing down nothing over here. This is what we're doing. And, like, from that, okay, so you win the Heisman. Yeah. We come back. We play Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl. Smash him. Smack. Okay? After that, that night after the game is the infamous sparklers in the mouth with the Dom and the Burberry scarf. Yeah. Right after. This is where like it starts and it's like we just smacked our old rival in the Big 12 and Jerry World in front of 105 right on New Year's Day. This is where the ego, this is where the you know, this is where you shift from, you know, Johnny Manziel into Johnny Football, the little transition mm -hmm. and then from there it's Mr. it's Johnny Football. Yeah. And, and now there's no more self-doubt. Because now there's you, no more self-doubt cuz I know what I'm doing in practice. Ooh. I know what I'm doing when I see cover 2 and I'm the whole shot I'm toying with them in practice. They're mad. They, I mean, the only thing they have on me in practice in the setting that I'm seeing, the live rep, bullets, fire, is they can't tell when a sack happens in practice because we ain't sacking people. Right. And you know in a game, you know, practice I'm running and give somebody a little move and I'm just looking at him like, ain't no way you making that tackle on the field, buddy. You can hop and hoop around and do your whole defensive <laughs> thing all you want. But you know. Out there, under them lights, no that chance. ain't gonna happen, brother. It ain't. Go it's not gonna happen. Right. And that's not me speaking out of my ass. It, I I got right. film. Right. You know, I got I got stuff to show you that like I wasn't what I was more than what you thought I was, especially as a running quarterback. I led the SEC. Wow. Fourteen hundred yards rushing in my freshman year. Wow. It's documented. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.